So hi everyone, let's get a little bit of energized. Uh, this is Celine Cornaz, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Massive Bio. So Massive Bio has been founded based on my family's frustration in cancer care. And our vision is to be able to enable access to every cancer patient around the globe to clinical trials, regardless of their location and financial stability. So we are, of course, as expected, an artificial intelligence-based platform that connects the cancer patient as well as the treating oncologist with clinical trials. And while we are enabling that, we are enabling the pharmaceutical companies to get access to cancer patients and their information in order to be able to speed up their drug discovery. So we are not your traditional clinical trial matching company. And the reason for that is that we spend significant amount of time and energy for these last mile issues. Because when the clinical feasibility has been ensured, then you have to make sure that which site that this patient is going to go through, what kind of financial challenges that this patient is going to go through so that we can ensure the enrollment. So why are we doing this thing? You know, in the oncology clinical trial, it is not secret that the current enrollment rate is about 3%. And in addition to that, 85% of the cancer patients is actually treated at the non-NCI designated cancer centers, which we call it as community practices. So there's a technology issue, there is a patient engagement issue, there is a chaotic, I would say, stakeholders and significant amount of operational inefficiencies. And at Massive Bio, our vision is to be able to increase that to 20%, bringing the right technology, right services, right patient engagement, and in addition to that, being the orchestrator of that stakeholder model. So how big is this, that market? You know, is it just because Celine is interested in this thing and she wants to do a pet project because we are doing this thing? It's actually very large. So it is right now a $39 billion market. What that means is that the clinical trial enrollment, the data infrastructure, and everything associated with that, to give you a perspective, the amount of oncology spending in the drugs is expected to be about, um, uh, I would say, $165 billion. This is a 25% incremental to that market, and that's the extent of it. And what I call this thing as the insurance industry for pharma, and it's expected to be about the $70 billion uh, in 2025. So what Massive Bio is, we are an end-to-end -end platform that controls the entire patient enrollment value chain. You know, we have the patient identification, and there are two aspects of patient identification. You either identify the patient through a BAA relationship from the EMR, or we have our patient contact center where we acquire those patients directly. When the patient acquisition has been done, we are doing the pre-screening at a virtual site using all the, I would say, glorified technologies that I'm going to explain in a minute. And then the question is that, where am I going to place that patient in terms of a site? Because most of the time, since we are receiving those patients from the community, the site is not available. So we do the just-in-time site activation in order to make sure that that site is available for that patient. And in the front end, <coughs> we are just patient enrollment value chain practice, but in the back end, we are real world data and drug discovery company because the applications from the data that we acquire goes to drug discovery, off-label indication expansion, and synthetic control arm development. And I wanted to, I would say, um, the importance in here is that for the patients that are coming to our patient contact center, 55% of the time, we identify a clinical trial that this patient is eligible for. But when you look at our enrollment rate, that drops to about 12.5%, and the reason why we work on that 75% productivity drop is all of these operational issues. So right now we are already selling to pharmaceutical companies and contract research organization. Uh, right now the sweet spots are the patient recruitment and site selection offering. So when we uh, launched the platform last year, we are actually uh, launched five years ago, but we have 
I would say start with our virtual tumor board business, then we develop our clinical trials, patient identification and pre-screening business. When we started uh, in 2018, we were two clients. Right now we are eight clients. <laughs> and if you look at our pi uh, pipeline, we are about 20 clients. And the typical applications that the pharma is coming to us, are rare tumors, biomarker-based clinical trials, you know, competitive clinical trials. If you're in a non-small cell PD-L1, and if you don't call me, I'll be very heartbroken. So, and then if the clinical trial has a specific intervention. So the type of business that we are building, you know, we are basically trying to put the patients into clinical trial. We are trying to do the right thing from a clinical perspective, but we are also trying to show that this is a gigantic amount of business. So we are trying to bring about $650 million and try to develop that $10 billion market cap firm. Right now, the place where we are in, in those categories of companies, that's less than $5 million in revenue. And we actually looked at about the 35,000 patients on an annual basis right now through our direct-to-patient and EMR integration. And we basically put together the patient identification and the pre-screening business. Now we are in a light stage piling on real-world data business and we are in process of developing our just-in-time network so that we can completely replace the clinical research that's been outsourced by the pharma. So in terms of where the technology resides, there are four components of our technology. There is the natural language processing to be able to structure the clinical data, the genomic data, as well as the trials data. There is the machine learning technology in order to be able to pre-screen those patients at scale. There is the real world data in order to be able to structure uh, or create the insights from the data that we structure. And there is the global patient registry for identification of the patients because right now, what really frustrates me is that there is actually no platform that gives you where the patients are. You know, you go to, I would say, the EMR data, you go to claims data, you basically get lost. And in terms of the, I would say, the competitive, oh, I think I, I can do this thing right now. So in terms of the competitive way, you know, there are three verticals that we compete. We compete with clinical trial companies, we compete with just-in-time network, and we compete with real-world data companies. And there are four areas where we differentiate ourselves. One of them is that we are the only platform that is dedicated to oncology and community oncology. The second thing is that we are the end-to-end -end platform to technology from the patient identification, pre-screening, as well as the just-in-time network development. The third aspect is that we have developed a hybrid patient acquisition because unfortunately, there is no right answer. Just going into EMR is not right. Just going to the patient is not right. You have to combine these different patient identification methodologies. And then the last one is that we have developed a value-based pricing system so that we are compensated based on the value that we deliver so that we are not breaking the bank for the pharma. So this is my team. Uh, this is actually my management team. We are about 25 people right now. Majority of the team is based in, uh, I would say, Newtown, Pennsylvania. We are a little bit of an East Coast based team. So I'll be more than happy to provide you more insights and information about company. But our goal is to get under the hood of clinical trials and making sure that we provide access to every cancer patient, regardless of where they are in the world. This is not an easy problem. You have to align a lot of the stars. And the other important point that I wanted to, I would say, mention in here is that although we are right now in a technology conference <coughs> in oncology, you have to really align the technology, the services, the network, and the patient engagement to align those stars to make sure that you get success both from a clinical standpoint and a patient standpoint, as well as a financial standpoint and drug discovery for pharma. Thank you. So I don't know, it's just. So it says, do 20% of patients need clinical trials? Why is there an assumption that trials are better for patients than standard of care? So. I think uh, the, the, the way to answer that question is that 
So yes, the 20% of the patients needs clinical trial because we are talking about the advanced stage cancer patients that the standard therapies are actually limited. So we cannot wait five years, 10 years down the road in order for that, I would say, um, um, in order for, for that approval to happen. And there is about 11,000 clinical trials and clinical trials that go, and you cannot limit it to a 3%. That, again, I'm not saying we are going to get to 60% because it makes no sense, but what I am saying is that for the patients that are in advanced uh, stage, but that are not necessarily going into a large academic, because no one, goes to, no one dies if they go to Memorial Sloan, but everyone dies if they go to somewhere else, kind of a thing. So you just need to make sure that the, those patients that, that doesn't have the opportunity to go to large academic medical center can get the benefit, and actually I believe it's even more than 20%. And I can actually prove that.